Hello everybody, my name is Akshar and this is my presentation for the project for wireless communication. My project topic is OFTM simulation using MATLAB. The course is EEL 6509 wireless communication at the University of Florida. So before I start with my OFTM project presentation, I'll first give a brief introduction about OFTM. So OFTM stands for Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplexing. It is a method of encoding digital data on multiple carrier frequencies. Popular wideband digital communication and applications include audio broadcasting, wireless networking, mobile communications like 4G, etc. So before I move further, first I will give you a brief explanation of what is multiplexing. Well, multiplexing is a method by which multiple analog message signals or digital data stream are combined into one signal over a shared medium. So, what is OFDM? OFDM is a frequency division multiplexing scheme used as a digital multi-carrier modulation method. So, what is the objective of my project? The main objective of this project is as follows. To simulate the basic processing involved in the generation and reception of an OFDM signal in a physical channel and to provide a description of each of the steps involved. Now first we'll talk about the basic, the basics of wireless communication that is the wireless communication block. So like any communication system, a wireless communication system is made up of three fundamental blocks, which are transmitter, channel and receiver. Now all these three blocks are explained in this presentation and further. Since I have used all these three blocks for my project as well. So this is the block diagram for OFTM. This is the block diagram for my project and my code. So as you can see the above part, this part is the transmitter, this is the channel and this is the receiver part. Now the transmitter has input data, FEC encoder or convolution encoder, modulator which in my case in this project is VPSK or QPSK, IFFT and in the channel it's AWGN, it's a function and then this the receiver, it has FFT, B modulator, FEC decoder and output data. So before I start explaining my project, I'll first tell why OFDM, why I have chosen OFDM as the topic for my project in wireless communication. OFDM is a very effective over channels with frequency selective fading. It is difficult to handle frequency selective fading which makes designs of receiver very complex. Hence, to mitigate this problem, it converts the entire frequency selective fading into small flat fading channels which are easier to combat by using simple error correction schemes. Frequency selective fading makes the design of the receiver end very much complex. Hence, to mitigate them, uh, OFDM is used. So now I'll explain the difference between FDM and OFDM. So in FDM, carriers are very far apart with respect to each other. And OFDM systems carriers are very densely packed and are orthogonal to each other. OFDM is bandwidth efficient as compared to FDM. OFDM provides higher data rate than FDM. And in OFDM, multipath interferences is more compared to FDM. 
So what is orthogonality? What is O in OFDM? Well, O in OFDM stands for ortho orthogonal. So what is orthogonality? Well, the key to OFDM is maintaining orthogonality of the carriers. So what is the formula for orthogonality? Well, it is the integral of the two signals if the two integral of the two signals is zero over a time period then these two signals are said to be orthogonal to each other it removes carrier interferences and the carriers become overlapped and tightly packed hence orthogonality is required to make them tightly packed and overlap So now I'll explain the OFDM transmitter. Well, as I already mentioned in the block diagram, the key components of the OFDM transmitter are input data, FEC encoder or the convolution encoder, modulator, the BF BPSK or in my case VPSK, and then IFFT. So now I'll explain a little bit about the data tra uh, transmitter. Well, firstly, the input data is first converted from serial stream to parallel stream depending on the number of subcarriers. Once the data bits are converted to required modulation format, they are superimposed on the required orthogonal subcarriers for transmission to the channel. Now AWGN. AWGN is the second phase of the block diagram that is the channel phase and it stands for add white Gaussian noise to signal well it is basically a function which is used in MATLAB to add white Gaussian noise to the signal the time domain data from transmitter is passed through the channel and AWGN this function as the name indicates adds white Gaussian noise to the signal passing through the channel Now moving on to the third and the final phase that is the OFDM receiver. Now the key components of OFDM receiver are CP removal, FFT, data demapping and decoding. Now I'll explain it a little bit of how OFDM receives signal. So after the signal is passed from the channel Trunk of received signal in a selective length is processed by the frame detector. Then the received OFDM signal is demodulated frame by frame. It is similar to the modulation which also happens frame by frame. And then fast Fourier transform is used to find the spectrum of the received signal. So, okay, before I explain all the output. I'll run the program on MATLAB. I code. So I've already written the script in MATLAB. So this portion is the transmitter part. This is the first phase of the block diagram right here. Where the number of data bits are 14, m is equal to 4, m is equal to 56. These are all the initial values. Then the data is randomly generated using random SRC. And then all the methods and are performed as mentioned in the transmitter thing. Now this is the channel phase or the AWGN phase. In this, as you can see, the AWGN function is used. This function is used to add the white Gaussian noise to the signal. And the signal add is saved on AWGN and it's for noise. And finally, this is the receiver phase. Now I'll compile. So 
as you can see values are generated and the figure also comes out so there are a total of 10 figures which are generated and I'll have already added them to my presentation so I'll move back to my presentation and tell you about the output figure generated okay so the output of the MATLAB code generated 10 figures each of which are shown in the following slides this was the original data this was the input data which we get So after the modulation, after the QPSK modulation, this is the output. Now when IFFT is done on all the subcarriers, this is the output we get for the subcarriers, the four subcarriers. Now the cyclic prefix is added to all the subcarriers and this is the output we get. And finally, the OFDM signal at the transmitter end is generated which is this this is the signal generated by the transmitter now this is the signal which is generated after that OFDM signal passes through the channel that is the second phase so the OFDM signal is received from the transmitter and then when it passes through the channel this is the output it gets this is the OFDM signal after it passes through the channel now in at the receiver's end, the cyclic prefix is removed from the four subcarriers. Then FFT is done on all the four subcarriers. And finally we get the received signal. And this is the orthogonality which we mentioned before. This is the output for it. Okay, now moving on to the advantages. Well, it is an efficient scheme to cope with multipath propagation. It is quite robust against narrow band interference, which makes it quite a suitable transmission scheme for power line communications. Since power line communications require have a lot of narrow band interferences, this acts as a very suitable transmission for them. It also it allows signal single frequency networking, which is especially attractive for many broadcasting applications. So it has the disadvantages as well. So the disadvantages of OFDM are it is very sensitive to frequency offset and phase noise. It has a very large peak to average power ratio which reduces the power efficiency. Now this is one of the main drawbacks of OFDM it reduces power efficiency because of the large peak to average power ratio and finally it requires high quality filters to increase the stop band attenuation as it displays large out of band powers so for the conclusion even after having both the pros and cons OFTM has led to be known as one of the most popular techniques for wide band digital communication it is used in wide number of applications such as audio broadcasting, DSL internet access, mobile communications, digital television, and wireless networks, etc. Hence, it still is one of the widely used techniques in the field of wireless communication. These are the references which I have used and the links. Thank you and I hope you like my presentation and my project.